cool animations on both websites and web apps has become the standard. And that's partly because with tools like Figma, we designers can now easily create these animations right in the tool we're using daily. So not only can we experiment to find the perfect animations, we can wow our clients and communicate with our developers without ever leaving our design tool. So in this video, we'll look at the five most useful Figma animation techniques that you as a beginner really should have in your back pocket for your next project. Psst. I'm pretty sure some of these will really open up your mind to what's possible with Figma animations. So make sure you stick around till the end so you don't miss any of them. If you wanna follow along, I have the Figma file in the description below. Now let's waste no more time and get straight into it. All right, everyone, so we are inside of Figma. In this tutorial, we will first look at the animations together and then we will dissect them and see how we achieve the cool effects that you'll be seeing here. Let's start with the first one, which is a simple click interaction. And this is something you will probably be using the most as a designer in a software like Figma when you want to prototype and create animations. So in this case, I'm using it for a standard navigation animation. So if I go here into my prototype flow and I click number one here because that's the first animation, we can see that if I click page two here, we go to page two. We get this interaction on this click. If I click on page one again, we go back. And how do we achieve this? Well, we can check here that in my frame, I have a couple of things. We have the nav in the top here, but we also have these two frames. We have one frame called page two, one frame called page one. Inside of these frames, we have a text object like the page two text here. And we have another text object in the other one that is page one. We have an image that is the second image and we have an image that is the first image. So when I click here, I click on this link here. We go to this frame so you can see what happens on click here. We're gonna navigate to this frame. We're gonna use a smart animate animation and it's gonna have a general type of animation and it's going to go on for 800 milliseconds and what happens inside of the frame is that i'm just swapping the position of these frames here so on the first click we have page one here in the center and page two is outside of the frame when we go to this one you can see what happens we have page two in the center and page one is outside of the frame. And it really is that simple. When we click back from here, we click page one, we're gonna go back here and they're gonna be swapped again. So that's the only thing that's happening and that's the first interaction we're gonna cover, click interactions. The second one is hover interactions. This one is a bit more complex, but I think you'll get it pretty quickly. So if we go to the animation first off, go to the second one here. Here we have a card with a button in it. And hover interactions are usually used for things like buttons and links and cards, as in this case. When we hover this card, you can see that we have this reveal animation happening. Now, when I go down to the button, we have a different hover interaction here. So two interactions happening in the same component. How do we achieve this? Well, if we go back here and we check out what I've done, I've done two things. I've taken this button, I've created a button so if we drag this out just to show real quick, I've created a button, I've duplicated the button and I've changed the style of it so that it looks different. 
then once I have the two styles I'm going for, so my hovered state and my default state, I target both of them. I go here and I create a component set. What this now allows me to do is I can create a separate animation for just this button and then I can reuse that in different frames, in different components. You basically gain a lot of flexibility. So I can remove this again and show in here instead. So we can see that when we hover, click me here, we have this interaction. So while hovering, we're gonna change to this hovered state. We're gonna have a smart animate animation. It's gonna be easy in 300 milliseconds. Pretty basic. But the cool thing here, like I, like I just touched on, is that I can take this button and put it inside of my card here so that this interaction is still intact. So we will still have this hover interaction for the button while it's in this new component, while it's inside of this new card. So you can see in the card here, what's happening is we have this image clip. You can see in the first state, this image clip is See here, this image clip is just one pixel in height. You can see that it's one pixel. It's outside of the frame. And that's the only difference. So we have clip content on this frame. When we hover it, we go to the second one here. And what happens in the second one? Well, the image clip, the height of it, is going to cover the full card here. So when I change the height like this, you can see how the animation kind of shows itself. This is the exact animation happening. I'm just changing the height of this image clip. And the way we're doing it is with a prototype interaction. So while hovering, we're changing to this state two here and it's doing a smart animate animation and I've added this custom spring. And this is something you can play around with and change the settings to make it look the exact way you want it to. But that's the only thing happening. On hover, we're changing the height of this image clip. So if we go back here again, you can see I hover it and it changes the height of the image clip. The image is just there doesn't happen anything to the image, we're just masking it. And then I can hover the click me here as well. So that's while hovering. Third one, drag interactions. This one is pretty fun. And usually you will use this to create carousels, to create sliders. Those are the most common use cases. So if we go into the prototype, number three here, we let it load, you can see that we have this carousel that if I drag the cards, I'm dragging the carousel like this. We have this slider, the party slider. So when I drag it up and down, you can see how this progress, or I guess not progress bar, but you can see how the thing gets filled with white color instead. How do we achieve these things? Well, we go down here. Once again, we're using component sets. In this case, for the carousel, I have three different states. So you can see I have one state where this carousel here is centered. So we see the center card. I have one state where it's to the right. So we see only the right card. And I have one state where it's to the left. And we see only the left card. And what is happening here is I have a drag interaction on this auto layout, this auto layout containing these different cards. So when I drag this auto layout, we're going to the second frame here. So on drag, we're changing to this view. So on drag, change to this smart animate, ease out 300 milliseconds. Nothing fancy happening here. We also have a second drag interaction from this that goes down to this one. Same kind of animation, 
But the reason we have two of them is because we can drag them in both directions. If I would only have this, we could only go from the middle state to the right state. Now we can go from the middle state to the right state and the left state. But for these, so the second and the third, the right state and the left state, we can only go back because from this state, you can't really reach this state. You have to first go to the middle state and then you can reach this. So we have only one drag interaction from this one. You can see back to the middle and only one drag interaction from this one back to the middle. So that's the carousel. So we can do these things because we set up the interactions like that. Then we have the party slider here. This is just two different states with a drag interaction. So the first state, there is no progress. This is not filled with white. And when I grab this, so I have the drag interaction on this emoji, on drag, we're gonna change to this, smart animate, ease out 300 milliseconds, and this thing is growing. So you can see we have this progress bar growing and this thing is changing position from the left to the right and that's really all that's happening so this progress thing is within this frame that is clipping content once again so this is the frame that we rounded we're clipping the content inside of the frame we have the progress in the first state it's no progress in this state, we've taken it the full width. But that's really all that's happening. So if we go back here, you can see this simple animation is made with those simple interactions. Once again, though, using component sets. That's a key thing here. But that's drag interactions. Over to the fourth one, which is delayed interactions. If I go into the prototype, click number four here. If I click this, we're gonna get this loading state and then it goes back to click me again. Click it, loading state, and then it goes back. So this is a cool feature to use for these kinds of use cases like the button loading states. So when you click something or when you do something, we want something to happen with a delay and then maybe we want it to go back. In this case, how I achieved this particular thing is I created two component sets once again. The first one is this loading animation or this loading icon or whatever you want to call it. And what we do here is we have three dots, three ellipses, and we just change the position of the dots in each of these variants. And when we look at the interaction between the variants, you can see that the first one here is connected to the second one. And it says after delay, one millisecond, we're gonna smart animate and ease out animation that goes on for 300 milliseconds. So after one millisecond, we go here, it takes 300 milliseconds. Then this one to the last one, gonna be after a delay of one millisecond, we're gonna use the smart animate, ease out 300 milliseconds to go to the last one. And then from the last one, back to the first one with the exact same settings. So this thing, if we just added it to a frame, it would just go on dancing like that all day, all night. Now, we don't just want to add it to a frame, so we added it to a button to create a more interesting animation. So you can see here, we have this button component. This is different than the first one. In this button component, we have three things. We have two text fields. So we have the click me text field. We have this loading text field that is currently outside of the frame. And we have this loading component here. When we click it, you can see how the loading here 
the loading text comes up from the bottom. The click me text goes from the center to the top and the loading component here, you can see goes a few pixels up and is faded in. So here it has zero opacity, here it has 25% opacity. And that's the only thing that's happening. So an auto layout, an auto layout button with position absolute items that we can change within the auto layout, change position of. And we're basically just changing position of things and showing and hiding things between those. The prototype settings we're using is after a delay, sorry, on click first, when I click this button, we want to change to this loading state with a smart animate animation. Once again, ease out 300 milliseconds. Then it goes back after a delay. So if I click here on this, we can see that after a delay of 2000 milliseconds, it does another smart animate, ease out 300 milliseconds back to this state. And that's it. So now we can grab this component, put it into a frame, and whenever we click it, we're gonna get that loading animation that we can see here. Okay, so over to the last one then. And this is overlay interactions. And this is something you can use for things like popover modal windows, drop downs, etc. Those would be the most common use cases for an interaction like this. If we go into the prototype again and we check number five here, if we click popover, you can see that we get this overly popover sliding from the bottom into the screen and you can see how it fades everything out. If we click on drop down, we get this drop down like this. So how do we achieve this? Let's start with the overlay one. So if I drag it here, you can see that we have this interaction. So on click on this button, instead of having navigate to or change to, we have open overlay. And we're targeting this overlay here. It has to be a frame or an auto layout. So we're targeting this. And when we click that, we want it to show up in the center of the screen. You can change different positions here. You can even take manual, so you can change the position like this yourself. But it's gonna be in the center, and we want it to be closed when clicking outside, and we're gonna add a background behind the overlay, so we can add this opacity without us having to do anything else. We just check this box. And then we specify the animation and it's gonna move in from the bottom to the top. You can see the preview here and what kind of animation we want again. That's really it for these overlay animations. They're very simple. When it comes to the drop down here, it's the same thing on click. We're gonna open the overlay, but this time it's gonna be manual and we're not gonna add a background behind the overlay. And instead of a smart animate animation, we're just using a dissolve with an ease out 150 milliseconds. The one difference here though, is that I wanted an interaction or a hover state for these links in here. So I created a separate component set with links where I added interactions. So you can see here inside of this, I added while hovering, change to smart animate, ease out 150 milliseconds to this one. And this one is a bit faded. We have 50% in opacity. So once I created that, I just took it and I put it inside of my dropdown like this. And now when we click on the dropdown, we have the hover state for the dropdown items as well. So using these component sets is a great way for you to create more complex animations inside of Figma. Are you looking to dig even deeper into Figma animations? Well, check out any of these videos. Now, until the next one, have a great life. We'll talk soon. Ciao.